Whenever I tell people that fish have ears, they look at me like I'm mad. But not only that, people are surprised by the really unusual sounds that fish can make, and especially on a coral reef. When we're listening to a reef, we hear the, the snapping shrimp crackling away. And then as we add in chirping, perhaps, of some fish that are trying to impress a female on, on a nesting site. And then we've got the clownfish that are using sounds to communicate within a colony and particularly to warn each other of a predator. These are fish and invertebrates that are making sound for a range of different reasons. They're sometimes trying to find prey and they might be hunting together so they're actually talking to each other while they do this. They might be trying to detect predators. Obviously they want to avoid any predators. But they're also then using sound to establish a territory, to impress each other. So it's a bit like listening to a full orchestra and it produces this wonderful cacophony of biological sound. And it's recent advances in technology that are allowing us to better understand this communication. A hydrophone is a device that allows us to listen underwater much better than our ears would work, and also to record this sound. With these hydrophones, up till about 1960 or 1970, were generally used by the Navy, and they were primarily used to listen out for submarines and to listen out for torpedoes. So nowadays, hydrophones are much more readily available off the shelf, which means that people are gathering really valuable recordings from around the world, and we're building a global understanding of the soundscapes in the ocean. And one of the more recent and really exciting developments with hydrophone technology has been alongside wildlife filmmaking. The rig that we used on Ocean's Our Blue Planet is made up of an array of hydrophones. And with four of these, we can now listen in four different directions at the same time. So what this does is it gives the, uh, the viewer a stereo feel of being underwater or even a surround sound feel of being underwater. But as biologists, what we can then do is to look at where individual sounds are coming from. And the way we do this is to look at the time of arrival of a sound. Sound travels very fast underwater, and with this array of hydrophones, we can look at whether one sound is just a millisecond behind in one of the recordings. And then when we add the video, it then allows us to work out which fish is making which sound. Although it was really innovated for filmmaking, we found that it's now helping us to unlock a whole new dimension of underwater sound with our science. We're only just beginning to understand these natural soundscapes with our hydrophone technology, but sadly we're also realising there are many unnatural sounds that are now making it difficult for fish to communicate. More recently, we've realised that human noise is part of that modern, contemporary soundscape. So pretty much everything from a blue whale to a plankton shrimp is affected by human noise. Now this human noise comes from lots of different sources. So some of it is through different types of vessels. There is also the sound from seismic surveys looking for oil and gas where huge underwater explosions create noise that penetrates kilometres into the seabed. Or from construction, and a lot of that construction noise can be pile driving, so that's banging very large steel piles into the seabed. So all of these sounds now are producing an acoustic fog over our natural soundscapes that we know are so important to animals. So that, at the very least, is likely to affect communication. 
We also know now that human noise causes stress in animals, and so this can affect um, early development. Some eggs don't hatch, some eggs hatch but are, are malformed, and this acoustic stress has caused changes in early development. But also that sound through stress can then affect the ability of a fish to respond against a predator. So we see fish more vulnerable to predation when motorboats are driving around, as an example. So we're building this awareness of how sound can affect all sorts of marine animals. The exciting thing that we found is that actually these, these noise producing industries have been very willing to be part of the science in that they are actually very interested in a range of ways of reducing the sound that they produce. So sound is one of the pollutants that we've got the most control over. We can really fix things very easily. And that kind of gives me a lot of hope, particularly working with industry, that it's the pollutant that we'll fix in, the, in our generation, possibly in the next 10 or 20 years. The more we study underwater acoustics, the more we're realizing that technology, like our hydrophone array, are allowing us to unlock the behavior of fish, but also to measure the health of the ocean but we've still only just scratched the surface. What else will we find by listening to the ocean?